I will just uh, make a little introduction to this project. And first of all, thank uh, you, Pippa, for uh, such an interesting conference and for inviting us. And also, I think uh, I would like to thank you for creating such an atmosphere and such an open atmosphere. So many questions and people from everywhere. And uh, it's not everywhere that we encounter such an op openness. And so we're really happy for this. So this project, I guess I will present it mainly because she's been working most on it, and I think she should have the credit. But I wanted just to present the, the prehistory of this project <laughs> is uh, that we have in the Center for Textile Research looked very much at terminology of textiles. We have surveyed, I mean, did that was in the Bronze Age in different scripts and languages. We have surveyed uh, 100, um, 10,000 tools, textile tools from the Fijian Bronze Age, the Middle East, uh, and uh, also looked at iconography. And so one angle of textile research remained, and that was seals and ceilings and seal stones and this very particular iconography that we find there. So Agatha and I uh, share this interest in textiles, and just to remind those who are not uh, fans of textile research yet, uh, <laughs> textile, it's, uh, we're talking about a craft that is very much older than other crafts. The only, only, oldest evidence we have is 25,000 years old in imprint. So we believe it has a kind of both normative and formative effect on other on development of other crafts. Uh, it takes very long time to make textiles, so it's present everywhere. And uh, in order to do textiles, especially weave and also do other weaving techniques, you need to be able to count and you need to have a 3D dimension of what you're doing. We both share an interest in weaving and spinning also, mm. uh, practicality. She's much better than I am uh, in, in this. But uh, so we wanted to look at these very strange um, images on sea stones from the Cretan hieroglyphs and uh, try to question the uh, cultural horizon and the interpretive frameworks that has been put on them. We know that, for example, in the Gian, that Egypt has played a long, a strong uh, story in, in the interpretation. Uh, now it's very much power structures that is used in our interpretation of the Aegean script systems. Uh, we want to look at it from a textile perspective yeah. and see what we as textile people see when we see these images. So this is our experimental approach. To mm -hmm. Thank you, Marie Louisa. Thank you, organizers. I think we can go for the next slide. Um, we would like to start with a brief introduction to the Middle Bronze Age and textile production on Crete. Then we will introduce only some of you uh, to the Cretan hieroglyphy. Then we will briefly discuss the Middle Minangliptic and specifically three-sided prismatic seals as a medium during multiple iconographic references to textile production. We will present a range of potentially textile production related real world references that may be recognizing schematic forms of the Cretan hieroglyphic signs, and we will discuss differences between these and the motifs that have been recognized on contemporaneous but not non-inscribed uh, prisms. We'd like to close this presentation with some conclusions with an important precaution that needs to be remembered that these are the observations resulting from the ongoing research and we would also like to note that all our observations on possible textile production reference to the Cretan hieroglyphic, we, we will exclusively focus on the iconographic analysis of these signs without any attempt to interpret their role in the writing system. According to Evans' traditional chronological framework for Crete, the Middle Bronze Age corresponds to the three phases of Middle Milan period. This was a period when dynamic social and economic transformations led to the formation of centralized qualities that are uh, traditionally described in the Aegean archaeology as the palaces. This is also the period when administrative practices developed, including the strategic use of seals and writing. In this paper, we will especially focus on the Middle Milan II period and geographically on Eastern and Central Eastern Crete. This is an area when the production and use of seals with pictographic and hieroglyphic images belonging statistically to Maria Stratite group and the hieroglyphic deposit group flourished at that time. Textile production in Crete is characterized by the use of flax and wool as the main raw materials, spinning with drop spindle technique, and uninterrupted use of the warp weighted loom since the Neolithic. 
However, the Middle Bronze Age in Crete was also the age of several new developments in textile production. The scale of production increased and, reasonably, its organization became more complex. The technique of purple dyeing was invented and spread, whereas weaving techniques that followed a gradual invention of the discoid bloom weights in early Bronze Age were widely transmitted over the island and towards the end of the Middle Bronze Age and at the beginning of the Late Bronze Age across the southern <coughs> Aegean. The transmission of specific textile knowledge from Crete has been acknowledged as first, at first by Jokatla as the important part of the minimization process resulting from the mobility of women with weaving skills. Numerous iconographic references to textiles have been observed on seals. They may be classified as depictions of costumes, depictions of sacral textiles, such as, for example, offerings <coughs> of textiles or garments and so-called sacral knots, motifs that are reflecting textile patterns, even if traditionally they are described as architectonic patterns, references to raw materials and possibly dye stuffs. Um, um, I forgot about spiders. This is a very important <laughs> symbolic reference. Now goes references to, there is a lot of clicking, excuse me, to raw materials and possibly dye stuffs, uh, such as woolly animals, goats and sheep, fibrous plants, flax, neurisida shells, and perhaps even moth producing white silk. And finally, we have references to textile tools, such as loom weights, sometimes with weavers, and the warp weighted loom. The last three categories, marked by red blocks, are of our special interest here, since several textile production-related motifs are the most frequent or are exclusively limited to the middle minan glyptic, and specifically, they are attested on three-sided prismatic seals. The short introduction to Cretan hieroglyphic is taken from the recent work of our host, Philippa, so I'll just quote her. Cretan hieroglyphic survived in circa 300 inscriptions, many on seal stones. There are also many clay documents and other objects dating between the beginning of the second millennium BC and circa 1600 BC. Although considered undeciphered, <coughs> it appears to be a script of a type closely related to those on, of the other Aegean scripts, namely the one consisting of a core of syllabic signs, um, that is, vowels and consonant plus vowel, with an ideographic uh, component, a group of signs for whole words or concepts, alongside the syllabic signs used to spell words out. The Minan textile production related motifs, as I said, appear predominantly on middle Minan prismatic seals from eastern and central eastern Crete, and specifically on the three sided prismatic seals. According to Anastasia 2016, seals with hieroglyphic inscriptions belong to main stylistic groups the Maria Stratar group, the Maria Workshop subgroup, and the hieroglyphic deposit group, whereas the three and four sided prismatic seals constitute the important and popular seal form in all those groups. The overall number of seals suggests a larger scale of seal use in Medominan Crete, whereas the number of seal faces constitutes even more substantial material for further iconographic studies. However, the inscribed seals are fewer. The Corpus Hieroglyphicarum Inscriptionum Creta comprises only 56 inscriptions on seals that were impressed on clay and 135 inscriptions preserved on the seal stones, there are more data like from the Petra Cemetery now, but still they are not revolution revolutionizing these statistics. Motifs that are possibly related to textile production are identified on the basis of knowledge of textile technology in the Bronze Age. At first, the general visual resemblance and distinct characteristics and functional features are examined in relation to the pre-existing identification. This is illustrated here, but will not be discussed in a detail by the warp weighted loom and the loom weights motif, and the actual modern warp, uh, modern warp weighted looms uh, with textiles being woven on them and hanging loom weights and shunt changing mechanism. I should probably explain that the previous identification of the warp weighted loom motif was a chessboard with conical points, and this is for Samas 21 of 64 and um, um, ladder with two points recalling a lyra for the <coughs> Samus 2228 
whereas the uh, hanging plume weights were earlier interpreted as vessels slung with a pole. In the next steps, possible comparanda in other media and other cultures are assessed, the geochronological frequency of the market is recorded, and iconographic convention is recognized. Possible combinations with other motifs on the same seal face and in the case of multi-faced seals on the other seal faces are also examined. These studies are carried out with the help of the online database of textiles and seals specifically designed for this project. The proced procedural sequence in the Shen of Peratua of textile production for these motifs is, uh, is willing. Similar approach has been adopted to identify possible textile production related reference to the graphic form of the present hieroglyphic script. It should be noted, however, that we only recall here combinations with other motifs that may refer to textile production, excluding the combinations of script signs. At first, let us have a look at the textile clothes reference that has already been recognized in the form of the sign Chic 041. There are nine examples of this uh, sign in Textiles and Seals database. Its graphic form resembles a piece of textiles with a border finished by fringes, which in turn may suggest the warp weighted long technology. When the wedding is completed, uh, the salvage has to be finished in order to protect the warp threads from getting unraveled, making various types of fringes would technically be the most obvious solution. This manner of finishing has been attested by finds of archaeological textiles from Europe and with regard, regards to the Aegean textiles by iconography of clothing. In Scripta Minoa, Evans first identified this sign as a depiction of the palace, but later in Chic it goes under the heading fabrics and pieces of clothes. Depictions of rectangular fringed textiles may be found in the Mediterranean as early as the Halaf culture, and they are also present in Bronze Age Egyptian art. Uh, however, the Egyptian fringes do not demonstrate a relation to the warp weighted film technology. The sign was once combined with a motif of a comb, which may be also a textile production related motif. If it's correct to suggest a step in textile shen operator for a script sign, it would be perhaps living and consumption of textiles. Our next suggestion is that um, plaques can be recognized um, in the sign Chic 031. This motif has been identified so far on 48 seals, yet it may appear more times on one seal face and on more seal faces. According to Chic, the sign 031 appears in a formula comprised of signs 048, 010, 031 in on 25 inscriptions. But the flex motif may also appear as a part of an ornament not associated to script. The schematic form of this sign recalls salient features of the actual flex plant, uh, which was used for oil and fiber and was indeed economically very, very important plant such as long singular stem with slender lanceolate leaves and a bundle of flowers and then seed capsules, usually shown as sweet wigs and by small blobs or circles. The depictions vary from more detailed to very schematic ones. Previously, this sign has been identified as an unspecific plant. Anastasia in 2011 uh, proposed a term shamrock with letters from A to C for its variations, but apparently without an intention to identify any specific uh, plan. Similar convention has been recognized in Mesopotamian glyptic in art, uh, in a motif identified by uh, Katrin Brennicke as fibrous plant, possibly flax. Depictions of flax harvest and processing can obviously be found in the Egyptian art, uh, where this important plan may have been also rendered very schematically, as we can see. A possible depiction of spindle with world may have stood behind the graphic form of the hieroglyphic sign of 63. This sign has been recorded only on one seal impression that is presented here on the slide. On the basis of this preliminary identification, some resembles to a spindle with well may be suggested <laughs> for the sign O62, and O63 and O62 are placed under the heading geometry in sheet, and perhaps O50 that is under the atlas. 
In scriptum in our one, we saw lance or dart or tag mace or a scepter. According to Anastasia, do this motif is termed spear. In Bronze Age, spinning was performed using a spindle with wool placed in the lower part of the rock. Spindle walls had various geometric forms and sizes that corresponded to their functionality and expediency for producing yarns of different quality. Raw material for spinning may be kept in hand or more likely placed on a distaff. On inscriptions um, 305 and 234, signs 062 and 050 <coughs> are shown with a smaller block that <coughs> recalls the skein of fiber prepared for spinning. If we accept this interpretation, a few depictions of a human figure with a spear head down have uh, provisionally been recognized as a man with a spindle. However, there is nothing that may recall technical gestures required by spinning in these depictions. A potential spinner or spindle may be combined with a wither with Lumweight's motif on the same seal face or on the other seal faces. Altogether, we have collected 13 examples of, of this motif in Texas and Seals database. Spe spinning was a very frequent theme in ancient art and in mythology in antiquity. Quite similar schematic manner of showing spinners has been recognized again by Katrin Brenica in Mesopotamian cryptic dated to the third millennium. Um, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the rigid huddle referent was tentatively being suggested for a graphic form of the sign O38 in Cretan hieroglyphic. However, the identification of this sign with any kind of volume is problematic. The sign O38 has been recognized in Shikin 62 inscriptions on seals and ceilings, and it appears as the part of the formula O38, O10, O31. And this is this. Um, second clip. And in the short combination with O10, that's another 14 examples. Traditionally, it is seen as a construction part and term a gate or a ladder. The new interpretation has been proposed on the basis of a general resemblance of this sign to a loom with a rigid handle, a very simple and very efficient tool for band weaving. The rigid handle uh, is usually made of wood and thus unlikely to be preserved in archaeological contexts. Um, the form of this tool is very homogeneous, regardless the time and place of a region, but it, its existence cannot be attested archaeologically before the Roman era, where bone and bronze rigid handles were used. However, band weaving has been assumed one of the oldest weaving techniques, and its knowledge is well attested in the Bronze Age by finds of archaeological textiles and by iconography, and that goes back to the Neolithic. A possible handle that can be seen, handle that can be seen on many seals, uh, recalls the actual handle of some rigid handles. Possible analogies can again be found in the Mesopotamian Greek. According to Brenica, the elongated rectangles with a series of parallel lines inside might be intended to render fabrics that were produced on some kind of vertical looms, possibly a wolf weighted loom. Although the rectangular fabric in Mesopotamian glyphic seems to render objects that are large scale in comparison to accompanying human figures, the overall similarity of both depictions and the possible relation to Dexter production seems to be worth observing, but I need to note that according to traditional interpretation, these uh, features in Mesopotamian glyphic are also defined as ladders, so it works for both interpretations. Okay, spiders. They produce protein fiber that is used to create the web. This observation generates a universal symbolic link between spiders and textile production, especially spinning and weaving. And this um, observation could be derived from nature. A relation between the spider and textile manufacturing was present in various past cultures, including a Sumerian myth about Utu, the spider goddess of spinning and weaving, and of course the Lydian myth of the weaver Arachna, who was turned, in, uh, uh, turned by Athena into a spider. The spider is very frequent motif in a gem cryptic, with 86 examples recorded in the Texas and Seals database so far. From these 57 examples come from the Mediterranean static prismatic seals 
and um, sometimes they can appear in a combination with a long weights motif and which is rare with a woolly animal motif and this triple combination similar to that presented on the slide has been observed on four examples but the spider motif appears as early as the early Helladic period on the mainland and then it is present on ivory and then on talismanic seals from Crete which are later than middle minan uh, prismatic seals and they are also present in the mainland in the late um, Bronze Age. Interestingly, there is one spool-like textile tool from Maria that was impressed five times by a three-sided prismatic seal during the depiction of two spiders. This so far single example strengthens the suggested symbolic relation between the spider and textile production and suggests that this observation may be valid at least for some of the discussed depictions and the direct association between the imagery of seal and its use may sometimes be uh, anticipated. In putting hieroglyphic inscriptions, the spider motifs appears only once and is not considered to be a script sign. There is also one seal when it appears on another seal face and then on the other seal face there is an inscription. And spiders appear also in Mesopotamian cryptic in associations uh, with <coughs> spinning. The conic sea snail motif appears only in one inscription, the one presented here, and like the spider, is not considered to be a script sign. There are more shells in Medominan cryptic, and the motif, although never particularly frequent, was present also in the later periods. The majority of these shells have already been identified as triton shells. Triton shells from the Heronia family are well attested in ecological evidence from Bronze Age Greece uh, and Crete particularly. Actual shells might have been additionally decorated and uh, imitations in stone and clay of these shells were produced. The use of triton shells as trumpets, votive gifts, amulets, vessels and statue symbols has primarily been connected with various cult activities. However, the highly sculptured body of the shell with spines may also recall shells belonging to the Murisida family. Murex snails were used to produce purple that was a pigment in wall paintings and a precious textile dye. Finds of numerous crushed shells are evidence at many Middle Bronze Age sites in Crete, and it has been assumed that the art of purple dyeing may have been a Cretan invention. Since the size of the shell cannot be recognized in most depictions and triton shells in reality are much larger, we would like to suggest that shells featuring spines may perhaps refer to the murex species as a resource of a purple dye. There are nine examples of possible murex shell motif in the textiles and seals database. In Bronze Age, wood and goat hair uh, were exploited for textile production on a large scale. The economic importance of wool must have grown constantly since the early Bronze Age to reach the industrial level in the late Bronze Age, well attested in the Lyman B tablets. However, we do not know what the Bronze Age, uh, Bronze Age Aegean woolly sheep looked like. It is assumed that this sheep was still similar to the primitive species, such as the European Mufflan on the slide. Sheep, goats, and agrinia, that is, feral goats, now endemic to Crete, constituted a very frequent theme in the Manan glyptic. However, as we may see, the exact visual distinction between them is not easy, and some inconsistency may be observed in the pre existing identifications. An attempt to test whether sheep, goat, and agrinia may actually be distinguished in the iconography of the Jan glyptic is undertaken by Kasia Zodraska, who is a PhD student in uh, our project in a collaboration with colleagues from the Zohar Archaeological Department of the Institute of Archaeology in Warsaw. Uh, there are 28 examples from the middle Minan period, which show only heads of woolly animals in profile or as protomies. These profile, heads, uh, these profile heads are visually very similar, if not identical, with the graphic form of the hieroglyphic sign 016. This sign recorded in six inscriptions and seals was identified as a goat head by Evans. 
To sum up, we are proposing new identifications for several motifs and new reference to the Breton hieroglyphic signs. This all linked the graphic form of the motifs and signs with text reproduction and consecutive steps in Shen Operatua of textile manufacturing. The first references relate to raw materials. This may be recognized in depictions of woolly animals and fibrous plants such as flax. The motif of woolly animals largely prevails on non-inscribed seals. Please note that the numbers which are given here uh, comprise so far only these woolly animals that accompany other taxa related motifs, and that this motif is undergoing further research. So generally, the woolly animal motif are much more <coughs> is much more frequent than this what is presented here. Flax, possibly encoded into the sign of 31, constitutes a frequent part of inscriptions and only occasionally appears on non-inscribed seals. Uh, spinning, if recognized properly through the image of a spinning tool, is a rare motif and referent on non-inscribed seals as well as in inscriptions. Possible reference to purple dyeing, if recognized properly, may appear in the form of the murex shell. They are more frequent on uninscribed seals, but overall red. Within, represented by the raw quaver gum and the weight motif, appears nearly exclusively on non-inscribed seals. The low weight motif is especially frequent on the three-sided stardite prism, and statistically every tenth seal belonging to this group bears the low weight motif. Uh, the uh, rigid huddle which perhaps stands behind the graphic form of the frequently used sign of 38, has been attested predominantly in the inscriptions. Consumption and distribution of textiles, or perhaps even weaving, <coughs> may be represented by textile cloth referent and the sign of 41, into which it might have been encoded. This referent has been recognized in nine inscriptions and spiders, are suggested as the symbolic reference to text reproduction, specifically the spinning and weaving. The spider motif is quite frequent, especially on the three-sided prismatic seals, but only once does the spider accompany the inscription. Conclusions. According to many scholars, but also to us, the three-sided prismatic seals and the Cretan hieroglyphic script might have been part of the same administrative system in which the practice of seal use was established earlier. Textile manufacturing and distribution of fabrics may have formed a significant part of these administrative activities and perhaps some reflections of this significance may be found in the imagery of seals and their textile production related iconography. Differences between textile production related imagery on non inscribed seals and textile reference on inscribed seals may perhaps reflect differences in complexity, scope, and scale of administrative practices and responsibilities of each of individual seal bearers or official. We would like to continue to explore various interpretations and welcome any suggestions from the audience. Thank you for your attention.